Today's episode of How Fast to Max is going to be a frantic collection of training methods and levels. It's because it is double XP live. We have 48 hours of double XP, and we're going to see how much we can get done with that time. Join me, won't you? We begin by depositing a bunch of these memory jars in the Halls of Memory into the Halls of Memory memory pit, whatever the hell it's called, because we gathered a bunch of them up before double XP started. Most of the XP comes from when you deposit it into the memory pit. So I gathered up a full inventory and I'm chucking them all in right now. And we got 85 divination from doing that. Two minutes in, we've already gotten one divination level. Amazing. Here's what our stats are looking like. You don't have to memorize it, it's not gonna be on the test. I'll show it to you again later. I made a bunch of unfinished potions. We also have a ton of herbs to make extreme potions from the super potions we can make. So right now we're making some super defense potions since I had a bunch of cadentines and whiteberries. We also have some stuff to make super strength, some things to make super range and super magic. And I think we're going to get quite a good amount of XP from making all these super potions. Then we'll get a bunch of XP from making them into extreme potions. Then hopefully we'll have 96 Arblore and we can make a ton of overloads and get even more XP. And then and there's more. We'll make prayer renewals with a bunch of the fell stalks I farmed and create holy overloads, effectively turning my four dose overloads into six dose overloads. It's basically a way to turn four doses of prayer renewal and four doses of overload into six doses of prayer renewal and six doses of overload. It's definitely worth doing. The combination potions increase the amount of overloads you have. And of course you want to do that because making overloads is kind of inconvenient since they are made of untradeable potions. So you have to make all of the extremes yourself, which are usually expensive, unless you make all the supers yourself, which are also expensive to make, unless you farm all the herbs yourself, which just takes a lot of time. So any way for you to expand your reservoir of overloads is a good option. It also is more bang for your buck, really, when you think about it. I also don't have very many super anti-fires, so we're going to make some Lantodime Unfinished potions that I made before double XP that I was going to make into super magics, but instead I'm going to make them into anti-fires. Then we'll add Phoenix Feathers. I got about 100 of them before the countdown started. We're going to turn them into super anti-fires, just so we have super anti-fires. I can make them whenever I want, but why not make them during double XP weekend? Or double XP live, it's not just the weekend, I'm just used to it being a weekend. Why not make them during double XP live when you get more XP for it? And for making those super anti fires, we got ourselves 95 herb lore, which means we get more XP from Herby Werby and we can make extreme invention potions. I made a bunch of super invention potions a while back to train herb lore and because it was part of the act track. So, 400 super invention potions, I could turn them all into extreme invention potions with mycelial webbing. So why not? We're always going to need extreme invention potions for making gizmos and boosting for blueprints and what have you. And since they're extreme potions, they give a pretty decent amount of XP. Since I have some bonus XP and it's double XP live, I'm getting almost 1200 XP per potion. And I have about 400, 500 in my bank right now to make. So, you know, we'll have over a thousand doses. We'll never need to make any more ever again. Now we have 96 Arbor which means we don't have to boost to make overloads and we can just make a ton of overloads with all the extremes and all the torstools we farmed and it's going to be great. It's going to be, you're going to love it. While making the overloads, we got 97 herb lore, which means we can now make holy overloads. There is a method for making overloads which involves using a beast of burden. If you have a pack yak, the idea is to fill it with a bunch of extreme potions and torstools. That way you can withdraw them from the pack yak as you're making the overloads without interrupting the creation of the overloads, effectively allowing you to create, I think it's nine overloads per inventory, so you have to bank less frequently. Mixing an overload only takes about two ticks, I believe, so four overloads only takes eight ticks, which is no time at all. A lot of the time you spend is loading the preset, opening the bank, loading the preset, and getting out of the bank. That takes a few ticks. If anything, I think the time you spend opening the bank, loading the preset, and starting up the creation process of the potions takes as much time as making the potions themselves, if not more time. So by increasing the size of an inventory, you're reducing the amount of time 
you spend in the bank. And since banking takes probably as many ticks as making four potions does, if you can cut the frequency of banking in half, you could effectively double your overload output. But I didn't bother with the Beast of Burden because we don't have 96 summoning, so we don't have access to a pack yak. Nevertheless, we got 98 herb lore, and you know what that means. Time to move on to smithing. Remember those Bane armor sets I made? Well, we're going to upgrade them all to plus four and then turn them all into burial sets. The amount of smithing XP you get going from bars to plus three is the same amount of XP as going from plus three to plus four and plus four to burial. So we're going to get the most XP this way. By having pre-made a bunch of the armor, we're not wasting any time on the low amounts of XP. So much like what we did with the memory jars in the Halls of Memory, we're front-loading some of the effort before double XP so we can get a big chunk of XP without using up a lot of our double XP time. This will also level up our augmented crystal hammer very quickly. Not just because it's a ton of XP, but because during double XP live, augmented items gain one and a half times XP. So the augmented crystal hammer is effectively gaining 11.7% of the base XP as item XP. I did forget to mention that I've been wearing Silverhawk boots this whole time, since <laughs> why not? You're getting double XP, so using fewer feathers. And we got 90 agility. This means we can now upgrade our base camp on Anachronia to tier 3. 87 smithing, we now create Bane items at maximum heat. 88 smithing means we now have a higher heat cap for Bane. Hammer reached level 10, so we disassembled it and got 88 invention. 89 smithing, we smelt Bane bars faster, and we can now smelt Corrupted Ore. We have about 500 in the bank, so we're going to get to that soon. I didn't realize it was the next clip. Okay, so we're smelting Corrupted Ore. It gives a decent amount of XP, but the first time you smelt 100 of them, you can get an XP lamp from Lady Traherne that gives you 50,000 smithing XP. But in the process of smelting all that ore, we got 90 smithing, which means we can now claim an attuned crystal weapon seed from Lady Ithel. Of course, we need about 2,000 harmonic dust to attune it, so we'll have to go back to the harps at some point. Either way, we got the lamp from Lady Traherne, and we got 50,000 smithing XP. We're one level away from 99 herb lore, and we still have Herby Werby to do. So let's do Herby Werby and get a ton of XP. One point is giving us 1,779 herb lore XP, which means a full game will get us almost 200,000 XP. And since herb lore XP is about, what, 20 or 30 GP per XP, even without double XP, this is still worth doing. With 90 agility, we can upgrade our spa to tier 3, which means we get more agility XP on the Anachronia course, and the spa pool effects last longer. I don't know who gives a damn about that second part. Maybe the spa pools have a critical use somewhere. I'm not aware of it, but uh, more XP. Cool. We did some fire making to get our augmented crystal tinderbox to level 10, and we're going to disassemble it. Not to get a level, but because we can get four faceted components from it. Faceted components are useful for getting enhanced devoted, which we still need. We'll come back to that later. What time is it? It's Amlod hour, baby. Time to level our summon. We got a bunch of crimson charms. We got a bunch of blue charms. We got a bunch of granite. We got a bunch of rune bars. We're going to make a bunch of granite lobsters. And we're going to make a bunch of rune minotaurs. How are we going to do it? Let me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you really quick, really easy. We bank at Wars Retreat, we teleport with the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed by placing it on our action bar. When we press the 3 key, it opens the interface, and if we keep our finger on the 3 key, it selects the Amulet District because the 3 key is what selects that option in the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed. We surge or bladed dive toward the obelisk, make our pouches, then hit the 2 key to teleport back to Wars Retreat and repeat the process until we have no more charms. At 85 summoning, we make Swamp Titans, and they do give more XP than Granite Lobsters, but the cost of the Tertiaries far exceeds the amount of XP you would get from making the Swamp Titans, at least in my opinion, so we're not going to do that. 86 summoning means Rune Minotaurs. We got the summoning pet at 3.9 million XP. And we also get Jack of Blades because that is the third combat scaling pet we've gotten. 87 summoning, we now have access to a bunch of the Niles and guests. 88 summoning means we now have access to the light creature, which means we can finish the final task in the hard Tyrannan task set. All we had to do was complete the Heffin Agility course with a light creature by our side. When worn, the Quiver gives us a 10% chance to get more Harmony Moss per harvest. We automatically use Cleansing Crystals when one is consumed, and we no longer fail Stick Traps. We have more Teleports on the Quiver, so we can teleport to the Elf Camp, and very importantly, we can teleport to the Mushroom Patch, so that's convenient. And we can teleport to the Death Altar five times a day. We're probably not going to use that very much. And finally, at all times, Lord Amlod's Shard Swap gives 10% more Shards, 
we can hand in Chronicle Fragments to Elwyn, although why would you do that? You get less XP for it. Lunette in the Kudarn District will sell us 16 battle staves, and at all times, we do more damage to elves in Perftinus. Arianwyn is the one who gives us the quiver and the XP lamp. And here's us teleporting to the mushroom patch quite conveniently. And we're also going to use the XP lamp on runecrafting. 40,000 XP. Why are we doing this? Because runecrafting sucks. It just does. We went to the overgrown idols, not because I wanted to waste our double XP cutting trees, but because we were very close to getting our crystal hatchet to level 12, and we got 84 wood cutting in the process. We used a crystal tool siphon on our augmented crystal hatchet, and we got 90 invention. We got some protean logs we want to use, so we're going to use them to level up our fletching. At 83 fletching, you can quite easily get a pulse core boost to get to 90 fletching, which allows you to make ascension bolts, which do cost some money to make, but I figure I could train my craft and get 91 while I wait for the boost and then make some ascension bolts and get some fast XP. It turns out going from 90 to 99 fletching with ascension bolts only costs about 30 mil. It's not that expensive when you think about it. But it's time to go back to Herblore and get ourselves 99 by making some combination potions, some holy overloads as I was talking about before. 99 Herblore. Uh, now we need to get 120. And here we are getting our second skill cape from Cake Mix. And what this cape does is allow us to clean all of the herbs in our inventory with one click. There's actually a money-making method with this cape where you can clean something like 40,000 herbs per hour. Wear the cape, throw it in your action bar, withdraw a bank preset, clean the herbs, and repeat. It was Amlot Hour again. And we got 89 summoning, which means we can now make Geyser Titans. 90 summoning, we can catch ourselves a chameleon. 91. 92, we can make Whooper Tingers. We probably will never make them. Taking a bit of a break to train some Slayer. Yes, I know that Slayer is probably not the best skill to train during double XP. But I don't care. I want to train some Slayer and level up my Royal Crossbow. Summoning is probably one of the most useful skills to get to max level as soon as possible. Not 99, but to 120, just because it makes getting certain perks a lot easier. And we got 90 ranged. We should get an Ascension Crossbow, because that's not a total pipe dream right now. We're going to disassemble this Royal Crossbow, not siphon it. We're going to disassemble it, because we want to replace it with an Attuned Crystal Bow. Yes, we can't use the Criminal Bolts with it but I don't use them anyway. Here's the problem. I have the Attuned Crystal Weapon Seed. That's great. I need 2,000 Harmonic Dust to enchant it, as I've already stated earlier in this video. I don't want to get that right now, so I'm not. So I might have to get another Royal Crossbow until I get the dust. Oops. With 95 Slayer, we can now kill Ganodermic Beasts, Ascension Bosses, and Luminous Snagglers which are very annoying to kill. I prefer a lamp and floor, but we can't kill them yet. It's time to do some construction contracts. We want to get 90 construction, and I have a non-negligible amount of protean planks to make doing the contracts a lot easier. It basically means we don't have to bank between every single contract to get more planks. 85, 86, 87, 88 construction means we can build master hidey holes. 89, much like every other level, we unlock nothing useful. Because construction is garbage. Okay, 90 construction actually does unlock some useful stuff. We can now upgrade our player lodge at the base camp in Anacronia. We can build a large pen for our farm on Anacronia. And we have a new port adventurer. Shifting gears once again. We're moving on to cooking. Probably not the most efficient thing to train during double XP. But we have some effigies that require a higher cooking level to open. So we need to train some cooking and open it. With 81 cooking, we've unlocked possibly the worst cooking training method possible. Cooking Corbicula Rex meat loses 300k per item. I totally forgot about extreme cooking potions, the most useful potion in the game, actually, because it boosts your cooking so you can cook food that's super useful. We can just boost and open the effigy just like that. How easy. The next effigy requires runecrafting or summoning. Fortunately, we had a pulse core boost that got us to a high enough summoning level, so we were able to open it. 
And we're finally able to get the uh, Dragonkin Lamp, which we're going to use on runecrafting because screw runecrafting. 82 cooking means we can cook endangered sea turtles, although they might not be endangered in RuneScape. I forgot to record some levels, but we have 85 now and we can cook wild pies. Personally, I don't mind pineapple on pizza. I think the crust and sauce is more important, but banana on a pizza is really weird. I had to zoom in really close for this clip because somebody was being a jackass with the fire. So we're training crafting. We're going to use our protean hides because using them during double XP makes more sense than using them not during double XP, right? Crafting is pretty expensive and tedious to level, so double XP training it is. Although frankly on my main I got 99 crafting on the harps and I ended up with like 35,000 harmonic dust. So I might do that later, who knows? I'm not speed running this. I just want to see how fast I can max if I'm sort of focusing on it with a new account. And that's what the whole series is about. If it wasn't obvious at this point by episode 25, then I have made a mistake and I wasn't explicit in what I was doing. Oh well. 91 crafting. We're getting around to the point where the arc is starting to become more unlocked to us. So we should do those mini quests sometime soon. We're going to upgrade our Anachronia Player Lodge to tier 3. It grants us access to the skill cape stand, which grants a skill cape passive effect without having to wear it. Unfortunately, we don't have a good candidate for the skill cape stand yet, but we'll get one eventually. I leveled up some Ganodermic armor because I figured it would be useful to have a bunch of fungal components just lying around in case we ever need it. By disassembling both of them at level 10, we get 16 fungal components from each piece of armor, giving us 32, and we're also lucky and got 8 powerful components. We'll no longer burn Corbicula Rex meat, so if we decide to train with Corbicula Rex meat, we won't lose as much money. 96 Slayer means we can now kill the Raptor Slayer creatures, Living Wyverns, River Demons, Camel Warriors, and Asheron Mammoths. Oh boy. They are, uh, they can be kind of tough. 98 Magic, and 93 Invention. I finally found a Divine Impling, which was the last Impling I needed to catch to get the bonus from Daphid here in... Dennis. We're going to go with double loot instead of triple XP because the loot from some of the implings can be really good. We also get a hunter lamp that gives us 50,000 XP. I made myself another augmented crystal hammer and we got 91 smithing while leveling it up. Disassembling that hammer got us 94 invention and we return to fletching. 85 we can make magic shield bows and finally we're also unlocking the ability to make some scrimshaws. Here is the method I was talking about. Basically, you buy 10,000 Ascension Shards, since that's the GE buy limit, and you craft them as you get the Pulse Core boost. And when you don't have the Pulse Core boost, you wait around till you get it. You could train other things, like crafting with your Protean Hides, which is what I was doing. It's very simple. I went with the Ascension Shards because the amount of XP they give is ridiculous, but they don't cost as much as Rune Darts do. Of course, they give less XP than rune darts, and they don't give as much XP as fast as rune darts. But it's still pretty quick regardless. Without double XP, it's something like 500,000 XP per hour. Unlike Broad Arrows, I can sell the Ascension Bolts back to people and recoup some of my losses. And unlike rune darts, the product you create is actually useful. Nobody really cares about rune darts. I don't really know if they have a use for anything. So they don't really sell for much. I guess you can disassemble them for swift components, maybe? But that might be their only practical use. So, Ascension Shards it is. And while waiting for a fletching boost, we were using the Protean Hides and we got 92 crafting. I have some combat training dummies I want to use. So we're going to train our defense with magic. And we got 83. Time for some rapid fire levels. 87 fletching. 88 fletching. 89 fletching. 93 crafting. 94 Farming, from a Dark Beast, 97 Slayer, from an Abyssal Demon, 93 Summoning, 94 Summoning, 90 Fletching, 92 Fletching because I forgot to record 91, 93 Fletching, we can now make Bacriminal Bolts, 85 Wood Cutting, we can now cut down Bloodwood Trees. With 93 Fletching and 85 Wood Cutting, we can cut down Bloodwood Trees and fletch Bacriminal Bolts, allowing us to finally complete the Elite Achievement Set for the Wilderness. You can boost to do a lot of these tasks, but if you don't have the correct level for the task, it won't actually complete. The wilderness is unique in that you cannot boost to complete any of them. At least I believe that's the case. That's how it used to be. And if it's different, well, then I could have completed this task set sooner. 
we get the reward from Collodion in the Majorina Bank in the Wilderness. And I assume Collodion is his last name and his first name is Nick. When on our person, the Wilderness Sword 4 will note searing ashes dropped from Lava Strike Worms. We can teleport once per day to Wilderness Warbands. We can teleport to the Wilderness Agility Course whenever we want. And the Wilderness Sword teleports work up to level 30. Finally, we have a 5% increased chance of obtaining Ancient Warrior's equipment from killing revenants. And also, we have the ability to see Mune in the Wilderness on Fridays and sometimes Saturdays and or Sundays if all Wilderness achievements have been completed and all rewards have been claimed. Mostly I wanted the XP lamps, which I used to get 96 prayer. We can also now complete the Elite Ardoin set, and one of the tasks required us to catch a manta ray from the fishing trawler. Nobody plays this minigame anymore, so I had to do the whole thing by myself, and the entire time I was super nervous that I was going to sink right at the end and have to do it again. We collect our reward from Alec in Yanil, and we use all of the XP lamps on summoning. That's 200,000 free XP that we don't need to collect charms for. The least useful rewards is that we'll get no junk from the fishing trawler and it'll be replaced by more useful items. And we have a 5% chance of making two rune crossbow limbs at the same time when smithing them in Yanil, but it's currently bugged. What I'm more excited for is now we have unlimited teleports to the manor farm right near the farming patch, right near the herb patch. We could also restore our summoning points once per day. We can get more sand from Bert and we have a 100% chance to spawn an additional chompy bird while hunting chompy birds, which we're probably never going to do. Completing both the hard and elite desert achievement sets requires killing a lot of bosses in the Dominion Tower. The hard task set requires us to kill the Calfite Queen with a Dreadnip. To get Dreadnips, we need to kill 450 bosses. That's going to take a while. I'm not going to do it all right now, but I figure knocking at it over time would make it a little more bearable. Maybe do 50 bosses every day for a week or so. But for the elite tasks, that requires us to complete just about every single Dominion Tower achievement there is. This includes things like killing every single boss, such as a Nomad or Xenovivia, which we actually need to complete a different quest to have access to her. The achievement I'm working on right now is getting all of the affixes that you can get in climber mode. So that's all of the drawbacks and all of the benefits, which basically means you have to climb to floor 22, and then you beat the boss on that floor and you get the achievement. And you only have to do that once. Unfortunately, this was the boss I got when I had all the affixes on me. It's not a particularly easy boss when you can't drink anything, and you can't eat any food, you can't use prayers, none of that. Fortunately, however, you can position it in a certain way so that it can't actually attack you. The only problem is, throughout the fight, it goes to heal, so you have to reposition it once again. And since I'm playing very cautiously, he pretty much heals every single time, so you pretty much have to kill him three times. It was a bit stressful, but I did it. I killed about 80 bosses in the Dominion Tower, but I think now it is time to move on to the Elite Seer's Diary. We basically had it completely done. We just needed to make and drink an extreme ranging potion in the Ranging Guild. We get the reward from Sir K, which includes the Seer's Headband 4 and some XP lamps, which we used on, you guessed it, summoning. The Enhanced Excalibur now heals for double the duration, doubling the amount healed. We have an increased chance of plus 2% that the special effects of Enchanted Bolts activate. We can get more flex from Joffrey, Jeffrey, and something about Coltrex. So I thought I had to get a new Excalibur, I had to get the Elite Enhanced Excalibur. And I realize now that I'm making the video, I didn't need to do that. I could have just kept my old Excalibur. I thought it was a different item. I was doing a Reaper assignment and I got 99 magic. The magic skill cape is very useful. It allows you to switch spell books from the bank. So you don't have to go to an altar or anything to switch to Lunars, Ancients, or back to your normal spell book. It's very nice. I finally got around to using some teleportation compactors and making some compacted jewelry. We have a Ring of Slaying, an Amulet of Glory, a Games Necklace, a Skills Necklace, and a Traveler's Necklace. All of these, I believe, will be very useful for when we're doing Clue Scrolls. I had a ton of penguin points, and now we're going to get a ton of summoning XP. 434,000 summoning XP from, I believe it was 64 points, something like that. And we get 95 summoning, which means we can make Iron Titans, a new familiar we can use our Crimson Charms to make. Much better than Granite Lobsters or Swamp Titans. And so I made a bunch of Iron Titans to get 96 summoning, so now we can make Pack Yaks. Do you like that foreshadowing from earlier in this episode? 97 summoning. 
and now 89 cooking because I ran out of charms. The best thing to do would be to collect them with double XP off and then turn it back on to get 99 summoning. But we're going to keep cooking. Now we have 90 cooking. We have a new port adventurer, the chef. I had to kill so many Anku to get the final piece for the Skull Scepter. It was ridiculous. But now we got it and it has infinite charges. So now we have a very convenient teleport item to get to the center of Barbarian Village. It can be useful for easy clues. The Elite Varrock Diary requires us to complete a large job at the Sawmill Training Facility. Do you guys remember this? I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. If it weren't an Elite task, no one would ever do it. One of the Elite tasks requires us to burn a log with the Inferno Ads. We don't have 92 fire making yet, so we can't get it. However, there is an archaeology relic which has the same effect as the Ads, except it does it all the time. It will burn the logs as you cut them. It turns out you can use this relic to complete that task. Basically, the task is cut a log and burn it. Doesn't say you have to use the ads to burn it. In Thalmund's Forge, in the War Forge, there's an item called the Seed of Charyu. If you activate it while wearing the Gloves of Flame, it becomes the relic Always Adds, which burns all logs you cut and gives you fire making XP. We get the Varrock Armor 2 from Reldo in the Varrock Library. But because we're in the library, I have to speak very quietly. We have a 3% chance of mining two mithril ore, adamantite ore, illuminate at once. A 3% chance of smelting an extra mithril ore, adamant bar. A 3% chance of double progress per strike when smithing mithril ore, adamant equipment. And the drop chance of skull scepter parts is further increased. I should have done this first. Also, we can buy more battle staves from NAF. The Varric Armor 3 is given to us by Vanica, the Slayer Master. When worn, the Varric Armor 3 gives us a 2% chance of mining two Runite Ore, or Calcite, Dracolith, Necrite Ore, or Phasmatite Ore at once. 2% chance of smelting an extra Rune, or a Calcum, or Necronium Bar. 2% chance of double progress per strike when smithing Rune, or a Calcum, or Necronium Equipment. We can buy even more Battle Staves from NAF. The Cook's Guild can be entered without a Chef's Hat or Cooking Cape. The Cook's Guild Bank Area can now be accessed. Bork will give double Gems and Charms, and... Bork will give more Sire experience when killed, 8,000 once we've completed the Mighty Fall, which we have. Vanica also gives us the rewards for the Elite Task Set. When worn, the Varrock Armor 4 gives us a 1% chance of mining two Bainite, Light Animica, or Dark Animica at once, 1% chance of smelting an extra Bane or Elderun Bar, a 1% chance of double progress per strike when smithing Bane or Elderun equipment, and five free bolt enchantments per day for ruby bolts and below. We have unlimited teleports to Bork's Lair. Finally, we can buy even more battle staves from NAF. We can toggle our Varrock teleport to the Saradoman Altar in Northeastern Varrock. The price of moving and redecorating our house is halved. We have a reduced chance of being randomly teleported within the Chaos Tunnels, and we have access to log storage boxes near beacons. We also want to complete the new Varrock task set, which improves the Varrock armor even further. But to do that, we need to complete the quest Dimension of Disaster, which we'll do next time. But here's the progress of 42 hours of double XP. Made quite the progress, I think. Thanks for watching. Take care.